Florida today as he continues his post State of the Union push on that economic message he delivered a couple of nights ago. NBC's chief White House correspondent Kristen Welker has more. One day after addressing the nation, President Biden was out on the road in the Midwest testing his message. The backbone of this nation is strong. And I've said so many times, often told the Democrats and Republicans, we can actually work together. But the president doubling down on his accusation that some Republicans want to cut Medicare and Social Security, a claim which prompted a backlash during his State of the Union address. I'm not saying it's a majority of you. With conservative Marjorie Taylor Greene calling him a liar. In Wisconsin, Mr. Biden firing back. Marjorie Taylor Greene and others stood up and said, liar, liar. Reminds me of liar, liar, house on fire. In an interview with PBS overnight, the president asked about those interruptions during his speech. Did you expect that kind of reaction? From the folks who did it, I was. The vast majority of Republicans weren't that way. But, you know, the, uh, there was a... There's still a significant element of what I call the MAGA Republicans. He also noted that Republican Senator Rick Scott had proposed cutting Medicare and Social Security last year. He says all federal legislation sunsets every five years. If the law is worth keeping, Congress can pass it again. Social Security, Medicare. Most Republicans, including GOP leaders, oppose cuts to those programs. Scott calling the attacks a dishonest move from a very confused president. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy also lashing out. He tries to use that for a political ploy. Meanwhile, the president also speaking out about the classified documents controversy in that overnight interview. The kinds of things they picked up are things that are from 1974 and stray papers. There may be something else I don't know. Mr. Biden aiming to shift blame to those who packed up his office from his time as vice president. As they packed up my offices to move them, they didn't do the kind of job that should have been done. NBC's Kristen Welker reporting. So James Carville, you can see in the contrast of the two stories we just did, the congressional hearing with Republicans about Twitter and the president out on the trail, uh, really the shape of a presidential campaign coming into view here, which is that the president's out at union halls talking about jobs and making things in America, and he can contrast that, as he did yesterday up there on the stage, with Republicans screaming about their tweets being taken down. Well, there was one part in the piece that was particularly illuminating when President Biden read from Rick Scott's own plan. Yeah. And then Rick Scott says he's being dishonest. Well, no, he's reading right from that plan. And every yep. Democratic strategist knew about this. Kevin McCarthy said in October uh, uh, during the election that they were going to force cuts to Social Security and Medicare. They've been doing this forever. And, of course, they keep... The president's got to go through his head. These people cannot be this stupid, can they? And the answer is yes. I mean, they, they set a trap, and they just walk right into it. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. And I think that, again, Willie, I, you know, you went to Vanderbilt. I couldn't get into that school. But I, these people, I, I, I don't think they could pass gas at, at a state teacher's college. I mean, they're really, they're really <laughs> Uh, did he just say that? Yeah, he did. He's James Carver. Wait. He can do it like, Yeah. I yeah, yeah. had enough espresso for that. That was a good one. Exactly. So, so yeah. some other, let's, let, let's follow up on the, huh? this fact. Again, this is what matters. You know, it's so interesting. Leading up to the election, there's supposed to be the massive red wave. Mm -hmm. You had uh, right wing pro Trump media going, oh, the Democrats aren't focusing on the key issues. Like, and there was a suggestion that it was inflation and that it was uh, it was crime and it was the southern border. And then a couple of days before the election, I'm calling around. I'm saying, well, what, what are your key issues? And they're like, you're not going to believe it. We have stuffed mailboxes full of these great ads on transgender athletes. And they kept bragging about it. Oh, this is mm -hmm. the former NFL player and da 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 da. All this stuff. And I'm just sitting there. Th and, and of course, the 10 year old girls in Ohio that have to flee the state after being raped. If they can afford the governors, it. If they can afford, if it, they can afford it. it. The governor, the gubernatorial candidates who were saying a 14 year old girl being raped by her uncle is a perfect example of why we have to force them to have abortions. 
you look back and suddenly you're like, oh, wait a second. It's actually the Republicans that just can't stick to the issues that matter to Americans. I think it was true in the midterm elections. I think it's true now in these House oversight hearings. Um, and I think it will. It, it has been true in the last two elections. The culture wars have always been the playbook, in my opinion, for this modern-day Republican Party apparatus. Right. Where is the tax plan? Where is the economic <laughs> plan? <laughs> the only plan we have is... I, I got one said, for you. What? Where is... How many years later? My God, it's been yeah, uh, it's 13 yeah. years later. Where yeah. is their plan healthcare. Healthcare. for health care? Oh, we have a better plan than the Ob yeah. Obamacare plan. Rid of it We've got our plan, it. and it's coming out next month to 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 replace and, and, and make better. There's never been never a plan. Been one. The culture have wars no have plan. been the playbook, but I think what the Republican Party apparatus has benefited from is that the, um, if you look at polling, for example, uh, over not just now, I'm talking about over the course of uh, years, the American people do believe that they are better on taxes, that Republicans are better on the economy, right. even though there has been no substantial uh, pieces of legislation, no plan to substantiate those claims. They just say it, and if you say it enough, people believe that it's real, which yeah. is why I think it is very important what the president did in his State of the Union speech and what now what the president, the vice president, and the cabinet are doing going across the country. They are reiterating and reinforcing in places large and small, rural and urban areas, uh, what the president said we have done. He's like, this is what we've done, and this is what we want to do. Mm -hmm. And it is very important to meet people where they are in their local communities. I do think, though, that my former colleagues should not be uh, so... Uh, there's a lot of brash and bravado, particularly when we look at uh, the Oversight Committee. Uh, and folks are like, oh, <coughs> you know, you all know. Folks are like, yeah. we're happy mm -hmm. about what we see. They don't say it on the record, but everyone will say it on, on off, off the record or on deep background. And the reality is, is that... What the oversight committee could potentially uh, damage the president. And so, and I do think that there are people in that building that know that. There are real, when it comes to the documents, the American people have not parsed out the difference between what Donald Trump has done, criminal, and what the president did do, did, yeah. happened to just find him in the office, somebody else, and gave him back and like, immediately. He's, like he's supposed to do. Right. And I, I think the lack of nuance in some of these things for the Absolutely. American people could potentially be damaging. And so they have to do what they've yeah. been doing. Doing, the president out there talking about the things, being highbrow, but yeah. lest we lest we have so much bravado that we don't think that you know right. they couldn't do something. So, damage. so James Carville, let, let's talk a, a little bit. Smell brought up uh, you know these wedge issues, these the, the, these red hot social issues. Um, let's just talk about how political pundits uh, uh, like me and others have gotten things wrong for 20, 25 years because what you hear. Time and again is, oh, the Democratic Party too far left on social issues. Take abortion, take guns, take all. It scares people in middle America. It's scared. Well, now we have we have proof. We got proof. The the dog caught the car. And it was an ugly sight, right? 50 years fighting to take away the right uh, to choose for women. They got their wish. And it just completely politically blew up in their faces. You look at guns. We all hear that. guns. You can't talk about guns because you're going to lose voters in this state and that state. Man, the polls overwhelmingly show uh, support for universal background checks and, and other things. I, I just uh, I think we all get it. Uh, not all of us, but I think a lot of us got it wrong through the southern border. They talk about the southern border every two years. They lose elections every two years. American voters obviously aren't as scared of these things as Republicans think they are. Well, uh, Jeff, you remember 1994, uh, Senator Biden, President Clinton passed the assault weapons ban, and we won an election in 1996. All right? The country, could, you couldn't have assault weapons in this country for 10 years. People on it, they went to gun clubs. On this, this trans stuff, uh, the governor of Utah is my hero. They passed a law to Utah legislature about uh, trans people participate in high school sports. He says, look, there's 60,000 kids in Utah that play high school for sports. Four of them are trans. Let, let the athletic association figure it out. That's not a problem for the legislature. And they, they just keep bringing uh, th this cultural stuff up. And when you stop to think about it, it utterly makes no sense. And the one thing they can do that they promised to do, and, and you would be into this knowing your record in Congress, they promised to produce a budget. 
Well, let's right. see it. Let, let's look at your budget. If, if, how, you, if, if, if you don't James, like how do you negotiate proposal, with somebody? How do you negotiate with somebody that doesn't give you a number? How do you negotiate with somebody that doesn't show you a budget? They say, "Oh, we want we want to cut stuff, but we're not going to tell you what we want to cut." Right, and, and the, the president said, I, "I will negotiate the budget, uh, and not not the debt extension." And they have not, and I promise you, they will not produce a budget. They said they would, but. What, does that, what difference does that make? Let's see your budget, and then we see what you got, and you show me yours, and I'll show you mine. I mean, it, that's just yeah. the way of the I, world. I, I, yeah, you know, and, and I think, again, you talk about budgets. That's something that matters. That's where parties show their priorities. They're not going to do it. And by the way, I'm so glad James brought up the Utah issue on, on trans athletes. Because it was such a huge deal out there. There was a big explosion of it. And this Republican governor said, come on. Come on. We're talking like this is a massive crisis. That's why I always say, you know, Republicans are obsessed on this issue. It's 0.003 percent of the population. And the Utah governor said, come on, we're talking about four students here. Let's show some compassion. Of course. Let's figure this out and let's not scapegoat them and act like this is a threat to everybody in the state. Use them as a political four, weapon. Four students.